morning, everyone. Thank you for joining us today for Business Strategy Internships, Supporting Canada's Economic Recovery. In this morning's event, we will be moderating an informative discussion about the recently launched Sprott MyTax Business Strategy Internships Program, or BSI, within Carleton Sprott School for Business of Business. Before we get started, I'd just like to go over a few housekeeping items. My name is Laura McCaffrey, and I'm an Engagement Strategy Advisor in the Department of University Advancement. I'm part of the team that launched Carleton's new Hub for Good website, which you can find at hubforgood.carleton.ca. The Hub for Good is a digital space dedicated to facilitating partnership and collaboration between Carleton and its broader community. Uh, we were recently in touch with Sprott in order to feature the BSI program as a partnership opportunity on the Hub for Good. Since then, we've been working closely with Sprott in order to develop and co-host this event, which we hope will be a valuable resource for you all. I'd also like to mention that I'm joined today by my advancement colleague, Jennifer Gray, who's part of our events and alumni relations team. You may hear her voice periodically as she's going to be keeping an eye on questions and helping to run things behind the scenes. Today's session will be recorded and we will circulate the recording link to all registrants after the event. We invite you to share that link with any colleagues who may be interested but who weren't able to attend. Our discussion will be led by three panelists, Dan Madularu from MyTax and Dana Brown and Muena Torkumi from Sprott. Together, they will introduce the BSI program, highlight the importance and value of the program to both organizations and students, and share some information about how to get involved. The presentation portion of the event will be followed by a Q&A, so we do ask that you hold your questions until that time. We invite you to submit your questions either using the chat box or to use the raise your hand feature if you prefer to ask your question out loud. So I'll now pass it over to Jen to introduce our panelists. Thanks so much, Laura. And thank you to all of you for joining us today and to our amazing panelists that we have here for you. Let me start off by introducing. We have Dr. Dan Malararu is the Director of Business Development for the Ottawa Region at MyTex. In his role, he facilitates setting up collaborative projects between academia and non-academic partners through a variety of funding programs. Prior to joining MyTex, Dan held a variety of teaching and research positions at post-secondary institutions, including Carleton, McGill, Concordia, and Northeastern University. He holds a Bachelor of Honors Bachelor of Science and Masters of Science from Carleton, as well as a PhD in Neuroscience from Concordia. Dr. Dana Brown is Dean of the Sprout School of Business at Carleton University. Dr. Brown joined Carleton from De Montfort University in England, where she was the Dean of the Faculty of Business and Law and Pro Vice Chancellor for Enterprise. Prior to this, she was Director of the MBA program at Oxford University Syed Business School, Professor of Strategic Management and Academic Director of the Joint DBA with Sun Yat-sen University at EM Lyon Business School in France, and University Lecturer in International Business and Management Fellow at Lady Margaret Hall, Oxford University. In addition to experience working in academic institutions, Dr. Brown has also worked in business with a number of new startups, including Amazon.com in its early years. She has helped to establish a number of active learning initiatives for entrepreneurs and has a particular interest in social entrepreneurship and its impact on the local economic development. Dr. Brown holds a BA in political science from Rutgers University, a master's of philosophy in Russian and Eastern European studies from Oxford University, and a PhD in political science from Massachusetts Institute of Technology, MIT. Moina Torkunu is the manager of external relations at the Sprout School of Business at Carleton University. In this role, she uses her extensive and in-depth experience to work with external stakeholders to co-create meaningful partnerships and collaborations. She oversees three distinct but synergistic teams, communication and media relations, alumni relations, and the Business Career Management Center. Through these portfolios, she works with corporations and community groups to help build their workforce through student and new grad talent, leverage student and faculty enterprise through experiential learning and research, and build overall reputation through storytelling. She also leads the Sprott MyTax Business Strategy Internship Program. Moina holds an MBA from the Sprott School of Business and a Bachelor of Mechanical Engineering with distinction from Carleton University. Wow. Welcome to all of our panelists and thank you for taking the time to lead this important conversation today. With that, I will pass it over to you, Dan, to get us started. Hello everyone and thank you for uh, joining us uh, for this uh, seminar on the business, um, on the BSI program. 
Um, just uh, a, as a quick introduction, uh, for those of you who haven't heard of MyTax, um, we are a uh, nationwide not-for-profit uh, fostering growth and innovation uh, by helping you solve your business challenges with solutions from the best secondary institutions. Uh, in doing so, we support collaborations at any stage in your innovation roadmap, starting from new product development through product and process optimization and all the way to commercialization. And we do so through a variety of programs. So although MyTax supports a wide, wide range of uh, collaborations through a number of programs, I'd like to focus today on a new initiative, uh, the, the direct result of the uh, COVID-19 pandemic called the Business Strategy Internship, or the BSI for short. Uh, this has been set up in collaboration with uh, Canadian business schools acro across the country. Through BSI, uh, small and medium-sized companies, as well as large companies and not-for-profits, can receive support uh, of highly skilled MBA and business students to undertake a four-month internship to address business operations as the econo economic recovery begins. This is a $10,000 internship. However, the business or not-for-profit, whichever may be the case, uh, only pays 2,500, uh, as you will see detailed on the next slide. So this diagram shows the breakdown of the internship contribution uh, with Sprott and the business or not-for-profit partner contributing $2,500 each, which will be matched by MyTax with another $5,000 for a total uh, award of $10,000, uh, which is in fact a, a grant. So why consider BSI and why consider BSI through Sprott? Um, and I, I have three points I really wanna make here. The first one is that uh, you get the knowledge and expertise from outstanding students in uh, fields such as finance, marketing, and operation strategy, uh, while at the same time, the students gain real world experiences with businesses and not-for-profits. Second, you get to leverage your budget, making your money go further. Uh, so you know, going back to the uh, previous slide, your $2,500 turns into uh, $10,000 once Prot and MyTax uh, put in their contributions. And last but not least, uh, and in my personal opinion, the most important point is that you get to build and strengthen connect, uh, connections and collaborations between companies and academic uh, institutions. And on that note, the relationship can last well beyond the four-month BSI internship. And MyTax can, uh, on that note, uh, help further uh, foster this relationship through a variety of other programs such as Accelerate. Uh, I'm not going to go into the details on Accelerate, but uh, please visit our website at uh, mytax.ca and uh, feel free to contact me for further information at the inform at uh, the email that's been uh, listed on this uh, slide or the the phone number. Thank you very much. So please, we would like to welcome uh, Dr. Dana Brown. Well, thank you very much. I'm delighted to be here today to have the opportunity to talk about the Sprott MyTech's business strategy internships. And the first thing I want to do is build on what Dan said about these internships, that they are truly unique. They're unlike any internship um, that I've seen before, where often you have uh, the university having something of an arm's length relationship with their business partners and with other partners in government and the community. And here, what we're doing is really really building strong ties um, between different institutional actors um, in our city. And now's the time to do that. Um, after the um, pandemic, as we reopen our local economies, there's a great opportunity for us to work together um, as universities, uh, as partners such as MyTax, and as businesses to really re help to recover our local economies um, together, drawing on expertise and drawing on the talent of our student community. The business strategy internships really fit well into Sprott's um, vision for its own future as a business school. Um, the first point I want to make is that we are really committed to continually improving our business education and committed to preparing our students for what we see as an evolving landscape of opportunities.
opportunities and challenges, particularly in this environment, post-pandemic, uh, post-closure, uh, as businesses rethink their strategic positioning, as consumers rethink uh, their relationship with businesses worldwide. Um, we want to make sure our students are prepared for this world, and we believe that the best way to prepare students is to give them an opportunity to have hands-on experience as a key part of their learning journey. Um, hands-on experience uh, that is actually coupled with learning the theories, the methods, and the tools of business is really the best way to prepare for a world of work. This partnership creates that opportunity, and we're linking not only outstanding students to businesses, but we're also bringing into the mix an academic supervisor who oversees the work of the students and helps them to reflect, to learn, and to grow as they're going through the internship process. The students will be working on strategic initiatives for companies. So uh, this is a real opportunity um, to draw upon the expertise that students have um, from their studies, um, but also their different viewpoint that they bring to the table as young people, as consumers, as the future business leaders um, in our community. This is one reason why the business strategy internship aligns so well with our objectives. It's around the student learning journey and the opportunity to create this form of experiential learning. But the second reason is that we have a vision in SPRA um, to, to make a strong commitment to local impact um, through meaningful and sustained partnerships throughout our community. We see the business strategy internships as an opportunity to start those partnerships. And as Dan said, to create the basis for a longer term relationship as we move ahead to redefine a future of business and the future of our local economies. I just want to say a few words about experiential learning. This is a concept that's very familiar to us in universities but may not be as familiar uh, to others. So experiential learning is a theory uh, of learning and the way people um, develop their knowledge uh, and their experience and prepare uh, for the world uh, of work and to enter the world as citizens and community members. Um, we find that there's a lot of uh, evidence to suggest that experiential learning, when students do some hands-on work, it really enhances their learning. It brings home the lessons that they're learning in other parts of their studies. Um, they can read materials, they can hear materials, but when they actually apply their learning to a real world problem and they engage in a collective endeavor to solve that problem, it brings the learning home in a, a very unique and specific way. So this is really important to us and the business strategy internships are experiential learning in their best form. Um, we also find that students really value this form of learning. They love it. Um, students today like the iteration between the classroom and the external environment, the opportunity to see how what they're learning actually applies to real world situations. And we think also that um, doing things like this, uh, doing this kind of hands-on learning really prepares students for a, a life of learning, a life of reflection. I went into this experience, I tried this out, what did it teach me? What new tools do I need to develop in order to approach problems in the future. Um, these are important skills for anyone entering a world that is constantly changing and transforming um, around them. The ability to learn, to reflect, and to learn again throughout your career. We think um, that experiential learning, when it's done in partnership with business like this, also uh, gives businesses an opportunity to have some insight into the talent that we have within our universities and to give us feedback uh, on what we need to add to the educational experience of our students. We want to be in that kind of dialogue and we welcome this opportunity to, to create those open lines of communications between businesses and the university se sector. And there are other opportunities as well. I think partnering like this, um, bringing the students together with businesses gives us all an opportunity to expand our networks, to create knowledge together, um, and to work together in, in very unique ways. I just want to say a few words about our Sprott students. So the students who would partake in the business strategy internships are our advanced um, undergraduate students studying in the Bachelors of Commerce or the Bachelors of International Business and our MBA and PMBA um, students. Um, these students all have studied business. They, they come uh, to this stra business strategy internship with a wealth of knowledge and tools and classroom experience um, working on large strategic 
strategic problems. We've also been working with our student body recently um, on crisis management recovery, a certificate program um, that we will build in with the business strategy internships that helps students to have a particular lens on the issues that businesses are facing today and the strategic issues that they might ask them to address in the business strategy internship. Our student body is very diverse. They come from a wide range of backgrounds. We have a number of students who are international students. We have students from around Canada who bring different perspectives on the problems that businesses today are facing. They're well-trained. They've developed uh, a balanced quantitative and qualitative skill set through their studies at the Sprott School of Business um, and well-prepared for work-based learning in the sense that they've been asked to develop the skills that, are, that make someone successful in the workplace, the interpersonal skills, the communication skills, the ability to present and to collaborate in teams. I should say a little bit as well about our expertise at Sprott School of Business. Um, we have um, been developing a number of initiatives to respond to uh, the current pandemic, um, highlighting some of the research areas and their relevance to the particular issues that businesses are facing. And if you recall, during the business strategy internships, our students will have academic supervisors that are drawn from our research community at Sprott. Um, these researchers have been doing award-winning research on a range of issues that are facing businesses um, in this new reality. Everything from uh, managing virtual teams, remote working, inclusion in the workplace, a lot of issues that are coming up for businesses. We have that deep expertise and research um, knowledge uh, about within the Sprott School of Business and that's been reflected in uh, a, a huge uptick in the amount of research awards that we have been winning um, around these issues lately. So we'll bring this uh, these this level of expertise to uh, the business challenges that our students face. Um, and these could create opportunities for future research partnerships in the future as well. Um, I mentioned also a couple of other initiatives that um, we uh, have put in place in response to uh, the pandemic. And that includes the crisis management and recovery initiative, the certificate program I referred to earlier. Um, we've shifted to remote learning and engagement in the school, but this has also not only um, created a new environment for learning for our students, but it's also created a whole new level of expertise and how we work and how we relate to one another in these remote platforms. And I think this is another thing that our students can bring to the table and our faculty experts can also bring to the table. Our Shifting Landscapes initiative is a thought leadership initiative um, focused specifically on business strategies strategies for the future and how businesses will rethink their place in a rapidly transforming world, a world in which the landscape is shifting. People are thinking different, consumers are thinking different, investors are thinking differently. Um, and uh, this thought leadership, again, we bring to the table in this, in this partnership. Um, and finally, we have shifted a lot towards integrating work-based learning into our curriculum because we do believe again, in the importance of experiential learning for our students, in the importance of them having the opportunity to respond to some of the real world issues that are facing businesses today. And this business strategy internship is perfectly aligned with that. So I just want to say in conclusion that I think this BSI is a great one-time opportunity if you wish to engage uh, with our students and with our uh, research community on solving um, some immediate strategic thinking for your business, but it's also an opportunity for us to get to know one another better, for to forge partnerships um, as a basis for a sustained engagement um, through shared knowledge, through joint research, and through talent development that I hope will carry on well beyond the period of the internship. So thank you very much for listening, and we look forward to hearing from you uh, about your interest in the program. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Dana. I'd now like to introduce and welcome Melina Torkanu. Thank you, Laura. Thank you, Dana, uh, for the presentation. Hello, everyone. Um, now that Dana and uh, Dan will have provided you the background information on the BSI program, my portion of the presentation will focus on the logistics of how we bring you on board as a partner and uh, help you successfully get an intern for your organization. 
So first off, I want to start with the eligibility criteria. Any Canadian organization is eligible for the BSI program. Our school is located in Ottawa, therefore our priority is to lend support to local businesses here in the city and in the surrounding areas. Um, so if you are an, a company, for-profit or not-for-profit, we look forward to receiving applications for you and you can be any size. Also, all three partners would contribute financially to the student stipend. Therefore, organizations should be in the position to contribute uh, your, their portion of the 2,500. And lastly, the project the intern will work on has to align with the broad goals of the BSI program, which is mainly to give business students the opportunity to apply their knowledge and to help the organization adapt and survive in the new economic reality presented by the pandemic. So what happens when we receive your application? We do have evaluation criteria that we would use. Um, and I will be talking about the application form in just a second. So first of all, when we receive it, we'll review it for alignment to the BSI program using certain criteria, uh, starting with the direct benefits to students. So here we would like to see the skills development or any new career opportunities that the students will gain by participating in the project. The second is the project design and rationale. We will be looking for clearly articulated project activities with, within reasonable time frame specified. So here the time frame is important because the BSI is designed to be a typical 16 week internship. So if the scope of the project is too big and we feel a student might not be able to accomplish it within 16 weeks, we, would, we might propose you break it down into multiple internships or reduce the scope so that it's a manageable project for the student. The third is the project significance and impact. Here we want to see how the planned activities and final deliverables are clearly linked to your organization's need. Again, the BSI is really to help uh, the organization. So we want you to highlight the significance and the impact that the project will have to your uh, organization. The fourth is the development of new skills and knowledge. We are talking about new skills or knowledge that the students will get the chance to develop beyond the skill sets that they would normally come with. To use a very simple example here, um, all our business students, as Dana has mentioned, will be exposed to certain uh, types of skills during the academic uh, pro degree program. For instance, they're exposed to teamwork or activities that build on their communication skills. If the project involves those skills, it's still equally valuable, and we want you to mention that in the first bullet, the, in the benefits to students. However, what will make the project more meaningful to our students is exposure to new areas that would not, they would not otherwise have had the chance to experience elsewhere. And this is where we want you to express in the development of new skills and knowledge. And lastly, the interaction and final deliverable. An important part of the internship is the mentorship the students would receive, and the application form should clearly demonstrate that plan for meaningful interaction between the students and the supervisor that would be on the organization uh, side. Also, the final deliverable that the organization is asking for should be useful to the uh, to should be useful to the operations. Uh, the application form should really demonstrate how you plan to use this beyond the project term. And uh, there would be also, maybe there might be opportunities to expand the internship beyond just the BSI program to other MITAX program. If that is an option, this is where you, we would love for you to mention it as well. Okay, so now I will go through the process on how you submit an application to get in a student. The first step is to submit your project on the intake form we have on our website. The link is here on the slide and we would also be circulating those as well. Uh, the students would, uh, the students, once you submit your form to us, you should understand that the form looks quite daunting because it's a long form and the process for it is, we would allow us to review the process to ensure that it aligns with the BSI pro program as well as we will be extracting a job description out of it for our job board. The next step from there is the student selection process. Uh, the, this is a competitive process. 
the projects that will be submitted will be posted on our job board for about a week. And then this timeline, again, is very negotiable. So if you're looking for us to put it up longer, that's possible, or shorter, that's also possible based on your needs. We would promote the job to all our students through the job board and through our other regular channels. After the job posting deadline, we will email the students with, uh, we, we would, sorry, we would email you the contacts at the organization with the student's resume and cover letters as a bundle. From here, it would be up to you to follow your internal hiring processes, which would mean you contact the students for an interview, um, and then you go through all the different things you need to ensure that you're selecting the right candidate. The only difference would be that after you've identified the student that you would like to move forward with, please inform us of your choice. It's important that you don't give the offer directly to the students because we have other steps that we would need the students to walk through in order to uh, be approved for the process. I should mention here that if your organization already has the students identified for the internship, you are, you are more than welcome to let us know on the application form and you would skip the student selection process. So once we hear from you uh, that you've selected the students you want to move forward with, we will start the internal process on our end, which involves connecting the students to the faculty advisor and creating an application in the MyTax portal. You will receive an invitation directly from the portal that would ask you to fill in some company details. Once all the information is in the portal, the, it will trigger MyTax to send an invoice to your organization for their portion of the 2,500. MyTax will consolidate all the payments, so our 2,500, your 2,500, and their five grand, and they will return the $10,000 to the university to pay the student during the internship. Because the university will be handling the payment, I should mention here that uh, our policy is the project cannot start until MyTax has sent the full internship stipend to us. Once we receive the payments and the organization starts signs the BSI partnership agreements, the student can then start, start the project. The project is usually going to be a 16 month, uh, six, sorry, 16 weeks in length, um, but it can be stretched to six months it, only if the project starts before the beginning of September. Uh, we would like all projects to be completed by the end of this year, 2020. Um, it is important that um, all uh, timelines and deliverables and expectations and resources needed are discussed right at the beginning of the internship. Um, so at the beginning of the project, the supervisor and the students should really have a conversation about what those internships, uh, the deliverables, the timelines and expectations would be um, to help the students with planning and also the expectation to follow. We have the expectation that you follow the mentorship process that was um, explained in the application form there's the opportunity to tweak that mentorship plan based on how the internship goes along. So uh, students will be responsible for all the milestones and we'll have a faculty advisor who would also be working alongside the students to ensure that uh, those are met. At the end of the project, there will be an official sign off with the final deliverable and the student, the faculty advisor and the partner would also be asked to complete an exit survey that would be run by NITAX. So that would, that actually completes the uh, application process and how we take you from being uh, an interested partner to uh, working with an intern. I would like to now mention a little bit more about the additional benefits for the BSI program. It's already been shared the valuable uh, aspects of working with students and coming on board as a partner. And especially for the BSI program, um, I should mention that those who are familiar with other MyTax research grants, there's usually some restrictions on which students can participate in those grants. For the BSI program, it's open to all our business students, regardless of the program they are in, regardless of their concentration, and regardless of their status. So whether they are domestic students or international students. Um, Dana shared already a, a, a broad idea of who our students are and what they would be, uh, programs they would be in. 
we also opened the BSI program to co-op students. So any co-op students could potentially apply for your projects, which also opens up the uh, pool of students that would be available for you to hire. If you were to hire a co-op student, I should say that please make sure that you are in interacting with the co-op office and uh, adhering to the co-op rules. The mentorship of the student is also a shared responsibility between the faculty advisor and the organization supervisor. We will try to match the student with a faculty member whose research interest aligns with the project, which becomes a very valuable resource to both the intern and to the organization as you go through the internship. Next, I also want to say that the, uh, the student would also get access to professional development training from MITAX. So it would really enhance the experience for the students and the available resources they could tap into. The next bullet is um, the fact that the university handles payroll. I mentioned that in the previous slide, we will be the ones paying the student directly throughout this internship process. Therefore, it would reduce any administrative burden that your organization would have to take on. All you have to do is send one check to MyTax and then we handle all the student payment moving forward. Uh, the university confirmed that we will be moving to a virtual format in the fall, so students are not expected to be in Ottawa during the fall term. Therefore, the projects that students get signed on can be completed remotely. So for those who are familiar with MITAX uh, programs, uh, sometimes there's the expectation that the students spend some time with the employer at the employer location. There's no expectation in this situation. So uh, the students would complete a fully remote work uh, term. And lastly, uh, again, unlike any other funding programs, the internships can be done either full time or part time or a combination of both. Here, yeah, when I say full-time and part-time, I'm using the term more loosely because we are really encouraging that rather than having students count the number of hours they're working per week, we would prefer that the partner and the student work together to determine deliverables and set the timelines for when to hit those deliverables um, because that would ensure that the work gets done on time. This becomes very important in the fall term when students return to full-time studies and they may be competing priorities when students are in courses. So a deliverables approach with a milestone will provide more flexibility and ensure that the students are able to better manage their time and balance that with their school load. So that really sums up the uh, BSI pro process and uh, thank you for joining us. We hope this presentation gives you a better understanding of what the BSI program is and how you can come on board. Okay, in order to respect, respect everyone's time, we're gonna be wrapping up now, but we will be um, taking note of questions and sending a summary of Q&A following this event. So I'm just going to welcome back our three speakers now for final remarks. So Dan, Dana, and Melina, do you have a final comment um, that you would like to share before we sign off? And we can start with Dan. Um, hello again. Thank you. I just wanted to say thank you for putting this webinar together. It's a, a, it's a unique opportunity in a unique environment for a um, unique uh, partnership between my tax and SPROT. So, um, I, I truly hope that um, you know, everyone sees the value that uh, this opportunity has to offer. And uh, please let us know if you have uh, questions and we'll be here to, to assist. Thank you. Yes, thank you very much. Um, I think my final point would be to say that um, this is a new initiative. Um, and so we're very open to uh, discussing the opportunities that this creates both for our business partners and for our students. So please be in touch with us. Uh, if it uh, doesn't resonate with you right away, um, there are ways that we can work with you and work together on partnerships in the future. Thanks. And I, and I would echo exactly what Dana said in the terms that please get in touch with us because we are seeing this as an opportunity to work with our local community, business community. Um, so we would really love to start the conversation with the BSI program, but also opportunities to explore other uh, options that might be more uh, fit in your organization. So please do get in touch with us. So I'd just like to say a thank you to our three speakers, Dan, 
and Dana and Nina for your time today and for sharing your insights on this important uh, topic and program. Uh, this is definitely uh, an in insightful and informative session and I think it's going to be really valuable to our audience. So thank you for that. Uh, thank you as well to our attendees thank for you. tuning in and for participating today. Uh, we will be touching base tomorrow with some additional information, uh, a link to the recording and contact details for the BSI program meeting. So look out for that. Uh, and we look forward to connecting with you soon. Thanks again.